Hello, Santas and Scrooges. Welcome to Evil Speak. My name is Dark. I'm your host this Christmas. Let's see. Last year, I already talked about some Christmas horror classics such as Black Christmas and Silent Night, Deadly Night. Hell, I even covered that god awful movie called Santa Claus. So, what else is there to talk about? Meh, too obvious. No, doesn't fit the channel. Well, I would, but I don't own the DVD. From what I hear, it's a shitty movie anyway. What the hell? Ho ho ho! Are you calling me a hoe? No, I got a present for you. For me? Yes, I was checking my list, checking it twice, and I found out you were naughty and nice. So? So, I got you a movie as a present. But you gotta do a review on it. Thanks, Santa. Whoa! Don't open till Christmas. How convenient! Don't open till Christmas is an English horror movie released in 1984. It was directed by Edmund Perdam, who you might remember as the principal from Pieces. It was produced by the relatively unknown Stephen Manassian and Dick Randall, the producers of Pieces. Damn, this movie's got pieces written all over it. And you know, that is a fun fucking movie. Will this be just as much fun? Well, let's find out. The movie starts out in an alley, where a guy in a Santa Claus costume is taking a break from the present. Get it? Present? Because, you know, he, he brings presents? And the award for worst joke of the year goes to... David from Evil Speak. By the way, isn't this guy a little skinny to play Santa? Hey! Sorry. The guy in the Santa suit meets up with his girlfriend and they make things hot and heavy in the car. But a mysterious person approaches the car and stabs both of them. We then cut to the opening credits and... Wait, he gave himself the lead role? Yeah, because that always works out well. Hey! Where's the apostrophe? I don't think it's a good sign if the movie's title screen is a grammatical error. After the credits, we find ourselves at a costume Christmas party where no one is actually wearing something Christmas related. Except for one guy playing Santa, of course. He is acting all jolly for the party, but all of a sudden someone jams a goddamn spear in the back of his head. So we're dealing here with a killer who's off in Santa Clauses. Now let's see, who hates Santa Claus this much? I hate Santa Claus! That cheerful Santa Claus! That would make sense. Now you might wonder, what kind of person goes out killing Santa Claus? Well, there's always a reason to kill Santa Claus. For example, last year I got socks. SOCKS! The police investigation is in hands of Detective Powell and Inspector Harris. You people are going to hate my guts for the rest of your lives! Not that, Harris. Other than both victims being dressed up as Santa Claus, the murders aren't related. There also doesn't seem to be a clear motive, so the investigation proceeds with difficulty. They don't got no clues, no suspects. Hey, come on, don't make fun of them, they just got started. So the murders continue. There's a Santa getting burned to death, and one getting shot. Okay, there's one thing I don't get. If there's a killer on the loose who was murdering everyone who was wearing a Santa suit, would you dress up as Santa and walk around in dark alleys? There's also a news reporter interested in the case, a journalist called Giles, who looks like he just came out of a David Hess lookalike contest. He's a little obtrusive and annoying and tries to talk to everyone involved, like the cops and the victim's bereavement. But he doesn't seem to have a lot of success with it. Ah, what am I talking about? You want more kills, right? Fine, let's unwrap some kills! Speaking of unwrapping, Santa is a lot sexier under his suit than I thought. No, it's actually a girl fooling around with her boyfriend. But when two cops arrive, the couple splits up. So the girl is running from the cops and... Hey there, little red riding hood. You sure are looking good. You're everything a big bad wolf could want. Wait, he doesn't kill her? In any other horror movie, this girl would be dead as fuck. I guess this big bad wolf gets more excited for the woodsman. But hey, there is a survivor now, so that means Powell and Harris finally have a witness. A somewhat pig-headed witness though. 
Look, I'm losing a lot of work. Yeah, how dare you go after a maniac who randomly kills innocent people and just violated this girl with a razor? You were arrested for indecent exposure. Indecent? I'm a professional. Yeah, so is Jade and James, but I'm pretty sure she'll get in trouble if she exposes her tits in public. The girl gives the cops some information about the killer's appearance, but if it helps... He was wearing a mask. His eyes, they, they seem to smile. Well, he was quite a big man. About my height? Yes, yeah, about your height. Whoa, you mean the killer could be anyone? That breaks the case. We then cut to a prostitute who is dancing to her Walkman. Apropos, that light should be red. I'm from Holland. Also, I don't think listening to music on a Walkman is the right way to draw customers. But the joke's on me because she does get a customer. A guy in a Santa suit. Considering the circumstances, I give him about 30 seconds. You can hear me now. Yes, I can hear you. Wait, is this a whorehouse or a prison? So, Santa, did you bring me any presents? I'm... I'm not the real one. I know you're not the real Santa Claus. Well, what makes you say that? But I also know that you work for him. This is so easy sometimes. They continue talking, but suddenly the guy gets stabbed in his neck and dies. Shortly after that, the girl's already back to work like nothing happened. Yeah, apparently seeing a guy getting butchered right in front of your eyes doesn't have much effect on you. She gets a visit from Giles, the journalist. But the girl recognizes his eyes as the eyes of the killer. So you're telling me that the guy who looks like a killer is in fact... The killer? She runs away, but Giles goes after her. What's she running for anyway? She doesn't wear a Santa suit. But Giles catches her and locks her up in an abandoned building. In the meanwhile, the daughter of one of the victims has started her own investigation and wants to talk about it with Harris. So she meets up with him at his house. But she discovers he can't be of much help. I've been fired. Fired? That's right, he's fired. And they don't bother to explain his why. Well, funny enough, I can explain this. During filming, he dropped out of the project and was replaced by two other directors. When he later on returned to reprise his role, they had to make up some excuse why he isn't there for a few scenes. They go and have dinner, and since this is a smart lady, she finds out stuff about Harris and Giles that can help her investigation. So later on, when Giles pays her an unfriendly visit, we find out that Harris is his brother and that he spent the last few years in a mental asylum. Uh, Giles, not Harris. All this detective work doesn't work out well for her, because moments later, Jeff strangles her and stabs her to death. So you're telling me that it's not a good idea to tell the murderer psycho everything you know about him? In the meantime, Powell has found out about Harris and Giles and goes looking for him. Uh, Giles, not Harris. He gets to his hiding place, but Giles kills him by electrifying a car with some jumper cables. Shocking. Wait, fuck that, I can do better. It's Giles unties the girl to get her something to eat, but she takes advantage of this opportunity to get the hell away. She runs up a few stairs, chased by Giles. At the top floor, he attacks her with a chain, but the girl manages to throw him down. She walks downstairs to check on him and... Oh come on, we've seen this a thousand times, he's still alive. Ladies, stop screaming, you did this to yourself. Don't you ever watch horror movies? Never! Check on the body. We then cut to a flashback of Giles' origins and it is ridiculous. As a kid, he saw his mother fucking Santa Claus, who was in fact his father. When the nanny pulls him away from it, she gets slapped down the stairs. And this is the reason to lose his mind and start killing every Santa possible years later. You know what? I have the solution why Michael Jackson lost his mind. Also, didn't we see the same kind of origin four years earlier in Christmas Evil? See? Mommy fucking Santa Claus and don't open to Christmas. Mommy doing weird stuff to Santa Claus in Christmas Evil. It's the same principle. But wait, the biggest cop out of this movie is still yet to come. It was all a dream! Yeah, it was all a dream. And I fucking hate these endings. Here you are, watching a movie you may or may not like, and then they say, nah, fuck it, never happened. You see how he's walking through the house, all uninterested and lazy? That's how I was walking through my house for months after seeing this movie. But as a last touch, his brother did send him a Christmas present. 
That's cute. Could have been a bomb. It was? What kind of a way to end a movie is this? So, deads don't open till Christmas. And this movie is a mess. After Edmund Prudhomme left the project, he was replaced by Derek Ford, but he was fired after only two days of shooting. So he was replaced by Ray Selfie, who finished the project. Some parts were rewritten, and a lot of parts even got refilmed. With so many directors and last minute decisions, you know you got a messy sleaze fest in your hands. But with a backstory like that, I think they did an okay job with it. Try fixing a movie that has already been fucked up, it's not easy. Yeah, the movie is a mess, and yeah, it can be boring at times. Even so much that it didn't even catch the names of some of the characters. But all in all, it's an okay watch. It's not a masterpiece, it's just okay. There are a few cool kills, and I like the idea of a guy killing Santa Clauses. It's a lot more original than the killing Santa Claus, which has been done numerous of times now. I think the 3.9 on IMDb is a little excessive. I give this a 4.0 at least. I just wish it wasn't so sloppily made. If it ran more smoothly, it would be far more fun to watch. Because this story had lots of potential. Well, it did scare the shit out of me. And that's all we got for this time. Have a jolly jolly Christmas and I see you all next year. Step into my dream.